Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here, my name is Chris. The channel is East Coast Classics and I love cars, but not just any cars. You see, I've always gravitated towards the more unusual stuff. For instance, a 1988 Plymouth Grand Fury or a Crown Victoria Police Interceptor that I bought at a state surplus auction and I later decided to vinyl wrap it in camo pattern. But today in the driveway is this crazy 1985 Chrysler Executive Limousine with a partition. I bought this car about a year, year and a half ago, done next to nothing with it during that time until today. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified whenever new videos get uploaded. And let's get started. This car has so much going on with it, so much craziness, that every time I look at it, I don't even know where to begin with my eyes. So why don't we do a quick walk around, I'll share the car with you, show you around a little bit, and then we'll jump in and take a drive. Up front, I think you have the most obvious, which is the fake spare tire, which I think is just a, a hubcap wrapped up in, in metal. Side exhaust, which isn't hooked up, obviously, and there's no supercharger. You have Eagle and some ornamentation on here. Diamond plating, chrome and plastic, flames, I guess that's for the windshield washer, which isn't mounted there. Some speed stripes, more diamond plating here. This looks like sheet metal. And on top of that is a cool Eagle that lights up and some more extra lighting there. Both of those come on with the headlights. Some chrome speed stripes, a hood ornament that I don't even know what it came from. I don't even know if it's aftermarket. I think that is a radiator cover that you get at Home Depot for your for at-home radiators, you know, for heating. You have eyebrows, more eagles, more decoration, diamond plating on the front bumper. Oh wait, extra lighting there on the side, side marker lights. Extra ornamentation. You have a sun visor, which is weird that it has a red lens in the middle, which I thought was supposed to be rear facing. More speed stripes, check that out. Diamond plating final roof. Oh, another eagle. Got to have that. Side skirts. More ornamentation. Oh, wait, back here too. Oh, flames. That matches the uh, windshield washer cover. Fake antennas. Spare tire cover. That doesn't really do anything. Just collects dirt and leaves and junk. Diamond plating on the rear bumper. And of course, the other side matches. But I think my favorite part of this whole thing isn't, no, it's not that, it's not the lines. It is the towel rack, the Home Depot towel rack sitting right up there on the front. Awesome. From the side profile, you could see the proportions are kind of weird with the car, but what Chrysler did is they took a four-door sedan front half, they cut it right here, right down there. So the front half is a, from a four-door sedan and the back half, because of the larger door, is from a two-door coupe. So you can almost make out the profile of what the coupe would be and what the sedan would be based on the door sizes. Kind of creative. So Chrysler was so short on money at the time, that's all they could do and all they could afford. And, you know, they just welded the two halves together and made a limousine out of it. The craziness doesn't stop on the outside. It carries it right through. You got bullets in here. I don't know what that is. A quill? I have no idea. A bull because, you know, you gotta have a bull. On the center here, some kind of ornate decorations. You have some more J.C. Whitney pieces, some buttons I put in that I'll talk about shortly. Inside the glove compartment is just a bunch of papers and documentations. This, it's a purple light bulb. Oh, that would look cool in here. And then down here we have, we have the trunk release button. Oh, wait, turn the key on. Let's go back there. Or you can always just flip the the Pentastar. Take a look at here. We got ew, some pillows. Oh, my crown. Uh, curtains for the windows in the back. This is partly some of the stuff that I was planning on doing with it. Oh, a pimp stick too. And a spare tire down there. Out back, it's a little more sedate. Pretty stock. You have you have some tassels that he threw in there. Yeah, grab handle. The finest leather from the town of Corinth. I'm sure of that. Some fancy blue lighting. You have a set of jump seats. Stereo. Air vents. 
Oh, and I, I put seatbelts in on the jump seats. Headrest, back here, you got a phone, which uh, it's just not even hooked up to anything. Down here you have, let's see, storage. Ew, leave that there. Oh, and footrest, check that out. Under the hood, all these limousines, they came with the same engine. A 2.6 liter Mitsubishi engine makes a 101 horsepower. It had a feedback carburetor, a Makuni carburetor that had solenoids in it that adjusted the air fuel ratio based on the O2 sensors that are down here on the exhaust manifold and some other parameters. And that's the biggest flaw with these cars is that those feedback carburetors, they go, they go haywire. And this car was running in an overly lean condition. It was causing all kinds of surging when the engine was warmed up when you're on operating temperature at max vacuum. So I yanked that off and I put on a Weber got rid of a lot of the vacuum lines, made it a lot simpler. Here's your wiring diagram. Look at that cow, it's just huge. It's great for trapping leaves. Put in a new battery, new tires also, less winter. And I put maybe, I don't know, 100 miles on the car in the time that I've owned it. Most of the time, it's been tucked way back there in the woods. I just left it back there. Just, I didn't even want to see it. I had no interest in this car for the longest time. I had to tow it out with the 4Runner, clean it up, oil change and all that stuff too. So how about we jump in and take a drive? All right, inside. You know, I drove the car about three hours ago and uh, it started right up and, and it always has. A, a pump or two of the pedal. There we go. And she fires right up. That, the engine is just, it's one of the pleasant surprises with this car, is just how well it runs. Even with the old carburetor and with this new Weber, it just, it always starts well, the choke always sets, and it's just always been a, a good dry, a good running car, at least. Um, you can see full instrumentation, we got gas gauge, temperature gauge, oil and volts, my info center over here, that's always on. I think there's a, there's a crack in the reservoir for the washer fluid. Uh, we have high beams, low beams, turn signal, parking brake, headlights, rear defroster, air conditioning and vent controls, cigarette lighter, stereo cassette player with graphic equalizer. Pretty exciting. Oh. Oh, right, ashtray. This is the air duct that feeds um, hot and cold air back into the, the passenger compartment. We have vents down here on the floor on each side. Oh, center armrest. Inside there is some, some trim pieces that broke off and some more knickknacks. Oh, and a pen and I don't know what else. Oh, and this is part of my Luku Karacha horn that I put on. It, it keeps... I. I put a horn in the grill, and uh, and that's what one of these buttons are for right here. Um, but pieces keep falling off every time I drive the car, and I end up finding them on the ground, and I pick them up and glue them back on and do it again. Here's the partition. You can see, I mean, that's just, just what the quality was at the time. That's just a, a decorative panel. Um, here's your glass, close that. Here's what's interesting. The partition, the walls right here, look how close it is to the seat. You can't even get your hand back there. So I've got the seat all the way back. And I mean, I could sit comfortably, but I'm 5'8". I mean, you get anybody taller in here and, and they're cramped as anything. If you put the seat further back, then you lose your recline in the seat back. And then you're sitting more upright. Up top we have, oh yeah, I didn't even know that. All right, and on the other side, yep, yeah, nothing. You got your controls, your mirrors, uh, window switch, door locks. Parking brake down there. And under here is your fuse panel. Chrysler horn, leather steering wheel, that multifunction stock, tilt wheel over here, and your gear selector. It's a standard three speed that Chrysler used for everything. All right, let's head out, take a drive. You 
one of the things I really like about this car is the electronic dash with the digital gauges and the digital speedometer. I think it's pretty cool. Screams 80. That's when computers just started coming out and being more prominent and accessible to people. And, you know, Chrysler was trying to play on that with the digital dash and the gauges. Kind of cool, kind of retro. Chrysler made these limousines for, for five years, from 82 to 86. Those first four years, they all used the same engine, the 2.6 liter Mitsu. That last year, they went to fuel injection. They went to a 2.2 liter turbo engine, made 40% more horsepower than what this makes. Made 146, 45 horsepower or so. Lengthwise, size-wise, this car is 210 inches long. Just a little longer than a Chevy Tahoe. Way narrower though. So it's actually very easy to drive, very maneuverable, easy to handle, easy to park, easy to drive through parking lots and on the road, easy to maneuver. Lane changes are a little bit of a challenge because of the large, I guess that's the AV D pillar back there. But because there's windows on the side, you can see back there pretty easily. Now, I, there were curtains on those back windows that I, I took those off simply because it was just a huge blind spot. I couldn't see at all. So it's just easier with them out. And you see those stuffed in the trunk back there. When you ordered one of these cars new, you had four color choices. Black, white, silver, and blue. That's it, that's all you got. Chrysler claimed highway mileage at 29 miles per gallon. But I also remember news articles and magazine articles of the time saying that those those EPA numbers, those highway numbers, they're all inflated. And that they had expert drivers who would shift into neutral and coast as far as they could to try to eke out as much miles per gallon so they can advertise, you know, 29 miles per gallon. Chrysler even claimed in those advertisements that, look, you're not gonna get the same mileage that we advertise, we know that. And we're gonna say that right up front. Chrysler offered a five year, 50,000 mile powertrain warranty with this and a rust through warranty. That's it, that's all you got. It wasn't a bumper to bumper warranty, it was nothing like that. It was simply on the engine, drivetrain basically, and rust. This car, I bought this thing from a gentleman in, in Chicago and he, loved this thing he was so proud of this car he's the one who did all the the decorations and ornamentation on here he was dead serious about how awesome this car looked i see this car more as something to laugh at something to admire something to look at and what else do you do with the world's ugliest car right you adorn it with all these things i had taken this car to two different car shows in the year or so that i've had it and i did it more as fun as a joke um, and just to laugh a little bit, but it was also in a way of kind of sticking up my middle finger to those guys that are drop dead original guys that have to have the right fan belts that are date coded and the right color and the right sheen on the air cleaner and all these original features that these guys are so adamant and so passionate about. Well, this car is the complete opposite of everything of that. This car is nothing but a fun way, a fun expression, a fun way of showing that there's an alternative to the craziness and to the OCD type personalities that some of these guys have at these car shows. You know, it's funny, a buddy of mine was looking at this car and he was, took a real close look at the side pipes on the car and he goes, wait a minute, I've seen those in a bathroom. They're handicap handrails. I looked at them too and I was like, oh my God, you're right. Absolutely they are. When Chrysler came up with the idea for this car, they didn't have any big cars in their inventory. They had nothing to compete with Cadillac and Lincoln. And so they came up with this, which is kind of a mid-sized car. They called it an E-Class, but of course they elongated it and, and turned it into a limousine. And that was the biggest front wheel drive car that they had at the time in the 80s. The only other car that they had that was not front wheel drive, it was that Plymouth Grand Fury that I had. That was the entire luxury car lineup that they had. In fact, a version of this limo did not have the partition and they marketed this car to large families. It's kind of like an alternative to the minivan. This car drives surprisingly well. It's really smooth, really quiet. The steering's light, the brakes are strong. 
the big letdown is the 101 horsepower. I mean, clearly. I mean, you can barely pull a hill with this. It's 3,200 pounds. Not super heavy, but you need more than 100 horsepower. But anywhere I go, I get smiles and laughs and cheers, waves, thumbs up, people taking pictures, people pointing. And that's what's so fun about this car. That's what I have so much fun with, what I enjoy so much about this thing. Right after buying this car, I ran it through inspection, and I figured they were gonna bust my stones on you know, the covers on the grill and just the, all the ornamentation, but they didn't, they could care less about that. But they did slap my wrist on the lights on the hood. They said they had to be covered, at least for inspection purposes. And strangely, the locking gas cap, I didn't have a key for it. So all I did is I drew a wood screw right through the grass, gas cap so I could unscrew it. They didn't like that at all. Something about the EVAP and the gases seeping out. I mean, they failed me for that right away. I had to get a correct gas cap for there that would screw on tight, that would hold the vapors in. Emissions that passed, no problems with that, no problems with the brakes and turn signals and all the other safety pieces. That's my limo, what do you think? I'm glad to be able to get it out of the woods, get it back on the road again. Some people call it ugly, eh, maybe. It's certainly unique, that's for sure. And you know, it's a lot of fun to drive at the same time. So let me know in the comments section what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you like the car, if you like the video, and as always, thanks so much for watching.